You're listening to Setting Course, an ABS podcast. Join us as we navigate the latest trends, developments, and challenges facing the rapidly evolving maritime and offshore industries. Catch every episode at www.eagle.org and podcast platforms everywhere. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm John Snyder, Managing Editor of Riviera Maritime Media, and I'll be your host. Today we're going to talk about autonomy in the marine industry, including its uptake, the technologies making it possible, and regulations governing its use. To address these and other questions, we are fortunate to have two experts in the field. One is Kalevi Turbo. Kalevi is a corporate executive engineer and global program manager at ABB. And our other guest is Louis Chi Wei. Louis is Senior Managing Principal Engineer, Global Engineering in Singapore for ABS. And as a way of background, ABS and ABB have a long history of working together on advancing new technologies. Among the projects uh, the two organizations have worked on is a remotely operated harbor tug that received the world's first re- remote control navigation notation from ABS. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Louis, uh, I'm going to ask you to start us off. Um, give us an overview of the current state of autonomy in the maritime industry. Uh, where are we? Yeah, uh, firstly, thanks for having us, John. So uh, autonomy is actually entering a very exciting phase in the maritime industry. So if you recall, uh, over, if you recall a couple of years ago, there was a lot of hype, but since then, uh, to the people who are not involved directly in autonomous development, it may seem that the excitement has died down. There's a bit of lull in activities, but don't be mistaken. Behind the scenes, actually, a lot of work is going on. So, in fact, uh, at the International Maritime Organization, they have just completed a meeting uh, which discusses the draft of the autonomous code. Various stakeholders, uh, various technology developers, class societies like ourselves are also busy working behind the scene. So we've actually gone past the introduction or the development of the technology. What we are looking uh, in detail now is actually the practical application of autonomous technology in vessel operations today. So we are looking at autonomous technology from various uh, viewpoints. Uh, It is not just about autonomous navigation, but what the industry is doing as a whole is actually to try to use digital technologies uh, to, in a sense, automate wherever processes uh, uh, that are being uh, taking place on board the vessels by human beings. So in fact, we are using such new technologies, digital and autonomous technology, to automate and to improve the efficiency of vessel operations. So helping in, uh, say, for example, helping the crew or captain in dis- the decision-making process. Yes, uh, decision-making process and also to kind of fill in the gaps. You know, some things are actually better done well by the by human beings, whereas for other parts of the operations, uh, especially when we are thinking of uh, trying to get the machinery on board to be working in its optimal zones and optimal uh, operating characteristics, that's where the machine comes in better. So what we're doing is we're trying to get a match, you know, uh, where human beings are good at, uh, at using their cognitive intelligence to evaluate various uh, conflicting information, the human beings will come in. But for things which are more tedious and which are data intensive, which are very critical and which require fast processing time, that's where the machines come in. So we are seeing as we go forward, uh, kind of uh, using technology to optimize the human beings' involvement in this operational process. Kalevi, do, do you have anything to add to that? I totally agree with Louis. I, I think uh, the the hype, uh, in, in to some extent, uh, is 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 over. Now we are seeing uh, like. Uh, Practical uh, implementations that can provide, uh, you know, benefits and and specifically, as Louis also pointed out, we're seeing kind of uh, really thinking of uh, not not really thinking that where to replace the the, the crew with uh, with machine, uh, rather uh, seeing that what are the what are the aspects that uh, the computer can you know do better? Well, where computer are at their best, and 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 then also how how do you kind of uh, work 
side by side uh, with with the crew so that the crew can use their strengths uh, whenever that's uh, that's necessary so really getting the best out of both of those and and that's i think uh, it's a it's a healthy development in the discussion and in in, in the in the whole industry look kalevi what kind of technologies are, are making uh, these uh, autonomous functions possible well, generally, uh, I, I think that the uh, marine industry has benefited a lot from, uh, you know, megatrends uh, related to automation, robotics and AI with, you know, of the scientific research and R&D that has, has happened in other industries way before marine. And now we're seeing uh, specifically, uh, I, I would say, you know, starting from, from, from data. So the availability of uh, edge to cloud technologies enabling systematic data collection and and they're also enabling availability of data you know from there we can go to data driven modeling and deployment of models more easily we also have more affordable processing power and 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 uh, you know on board that can enable running these algorithms so now we're seeing uh, more and more deployment of uh, ai driven uh, uh, perception systems uh, and situational awareness systems, for example, that help to do uh, the lookout task, uh, monitoring and detecting uh, navigational hazard from surroundings and and, uh, and 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 alerting the crew and performing that uh, relentlessly and continuously without the risk of human error. That's one thing. And, and then the other thing is, is then when you combine all of those data and bring more advanced algorithms on top of that to enable support and, and even autonomous, uh, you know, risk assessment, decision making, trajectory planning and more advanced motion control of the vessel. So it's, it's a whole suite of, uh, of let's say, technologies uh, that, that, that kind of enables this, uh, this uh, development. Now, Louis, do you, do you have anything to, to add to what Kalebi said? Yes. So, uh, like what Kalevi mentioned, autonomous technology is not a singular technology. It's actually a convergence of various technologies. Uh, AI, for example, connectivity, uh, sensor technologies, uh, the, the data analytics. So, uh, the industry, it's although it's now we can see autonomous is actually it's it's in an infancy. It's also because they, all these technologies are trying to move in the same direction, but there will come a time when the technology have all the readiness of each of the individual technologies are ready and it overcomes the barrier that is in front of it and once that's ready what we think that uh, the industry will really make full use of autonomous technology to improve uh, their operations and processes louis where where are we seeing uh, these technologies being piloted so we we see them uh, in various in, in fact all sectors of the industry because uh, uh, in the nutshell, it can be divided into the domestic or short seas uh, segment, and also at the other side, at the other end of the spectrum, we we see them in the ocean-going voyages. So what we see them being used are, uh, uh, for example, the very first technology that uh, kinds of uh, falls into the autonomous bucket that we see: uh, situational awareness, autonomous navigation, and collision detection and collision avoidance. Uh, we've seen it's already being trialed. Uh, you know, in various by various stakeholders, including by uh, ABB for short sea vessels for tugboats, uh, they they are also uh, being used uh, increasingly in ocean going voyages. Although the technology may not be used for autonomous navigation, but we see that situational awareness, which is one of the foundational core technology of autonomous navigation, uh, they are actually being used today in conventional vessels to help give uh, greater uh, assistance to seafarers who are navigating through the various uh, busy waters. Now, Kalevi, uh, uh, Louis mentioned, uh, you know, ABB's projects. Could you highlight some of those for us? Yes. Uh, in, in short distance uh, vessels, uh, one of the one of the highlight projects that we've uh, we've run a couple of years ago uh, was the autonomous and uh, remote controlled uh, tug project in Singapore, uh, where we demonstrated uh, autonomous and, and remote operation uh, in in uh, coastal you know busy coastal waters and it was quite a, quite a successful uh, project uh, where we where we learned a lot uh, the other aspect that I'd like to highlight also when it comes to the technologies and, and a little bit of the of the uh, let's say ship types uh, we're also focusing quite heavily in in kind of enabling uh, more advanced uh, higher level of abstraction automatic control 
Uh, so instead of going from you know using a manual levers and an and, and autopilot, but really have like a generic uh, all speed. Uh, motion uh, control system that can enable uh, more e easier uh, manual control, but then also it's more sim easy to simplify uh, automation or, or simpler to implement automation on top of that. And there we are seeing, you know, for example, in, 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 in cruise vessels uh, were deployed uh, quite a few of these systems uh, al already where the user is able to uh, operate the vessel uh, in, a, in a higher abstraction level. And also, then on top of that, uh, we can bring automated, more automated functionalities such as automatic crash stop, uh, which enables to uh, perform a crash stop uh, in an optimal way while keeping the the, the crew on in control of the course of the vessel, and and then that's of course quite uh, quite beneficial in those kind of situations. So certainly, uh, autonomy uh, in that uh, instance uh, is is increasing the the safety factor then. Yes, definitely. That's uh, one of the one of the main main drivers, uh, especially in in uh, in uh, bigger bigger vessels that uh, that uh, in, you know, to keep keep the vessel and, and the crew and the environment safe. And Louis, did did you have anything to to add to what uh, Kalevi said? Yes, uh, John. Really, uh, you've actually touched on a, a very important point. So uh, the development we see today, it is not just technology for technology's sake. Uh, increasing safety is a very important key factor. So various uh, studies have also pointed out that quite a large percentage of uh, incidents of accidents uh, on the high seas are actually a result of uh, human error. So what autonomous technology is also trying to do is basically by utilizing such technology to, in a sense, lighten the cognitive load on the seafarers. Uh, as we've heard, uh, from various stakeholders, from various parties, uh, we have heard feedback that uh, we are asking a lot from the seafarers, uh, not only that they have to focus on what their, their critical job at hand, there is also a large number of uh, administrative tasks which they need to do. So in, in a sense, uh, by using technology to lighten the cognitive load on them, to uh, allows them to focus on what they really need to fo focus on, which is a critical work at hand, and hopefully that will increase safety as we go forward. Of course, there are hurdles to to implementing autonomy in, in the industry, and and I was wondering, Louis, if you could start us up, what, what hurdles do you see uh, the industry has to overcome to to really uh, expand the, the uptake of autonomous uh, technologies? So really, the, the key two hurdles would be regulatory and standardization. Uh, currently, in IMO regulations, uh, most of the key regulations require a human being to be in charge of the functions. Uh, in fact, uh, there's also a requirement that uh, the human beings have to be on the vessel to keep watch. So we have to bear in mind that uh, the maritime industry is a, is a long industry. Most of these regulations uh, have been written decades ago where the technologies we see today uh, have uh, were not there yet. So uh, now that we have new technology coming out which can do a better job, uh, wouldn't it be fair or wouldn't it be, be prudent to see how we can leverage on such technology to, to carry out those operations. So the IMO is aware of that, uh, various uh, countries are aware of that, so which is why there's a key effort at IMO to try to draft uh, uh, what we call a mass code or maritime autonomous surface ships code to give some sort of framework to allow autonomous operations within the maritime uh, regulatory regime. And the other uh, side of the coin is also uh, without any regulations, uh, without any form of standardizations, what we see is that various parties are uh, uh, utilizing different type of uh, assumptions for them to carry out that work. So. Uh, it's it's kind of a uh, there, there's pros and cons in not having uh, standardization at this stage of the of the development of maritime autonomy. Uh, firstly, of course, the pro will be uh, without rigid standards, without prescriptive standards, it gives a little bit of leeway for technology providers to try different technologies to try different way of doing things. But on the other side of the coin, 
uh, the owners and the other stakeholders are a little bit kind of a confused on the uh, what do the different terms used by different stakeholders actually mean. So that also is a little bit of a hindrance to allow greater adoption of such technologies. So in a nutshell, the industry is realizing that we need a practical regulatory framework to allow such uh, use. We also, as we develop further, and this could be the medium term, we need to have some sort of standard term terminologies, uh, standard uh, description of the functions and systems which we use to enable autonomous operations. Now, Kalevi, as a uh, technology provider, do you see that as a huge hurdle, the standardization that uh, Louis has mentioned? It, it is a huge, huge hurdle, uh, but uh, but I think that's exactly uh, what is needed. I, I think it's quite uh, important that everybody gets on the same page, and it will take time because I mean, commercial deployment of uh, of uh, you know autonomous technologies, uh, it it will require uh, the ship owner and operator. It will require technology vendors, classification societies, flag state authorities, insurance companies, and all that, and. Everybody needs to understand the technology, uh, the operations with it, the limitations and the risks, so that uh, you know all stakeholders can do, let's say, their part of the process to document and 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 uh, to standardize, and and that's the only way to 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 get to a state where where you can actually you know like if you think about the whole whole value chain from the from the from the customer who wants to owner who wants to build a ship that they can actually they know what's available what kind of uh, you know because uh, you know there are standards and terminologies and all that they know what's available and then the shipyards can can you know inquire uh, you know vendors uh, you know those kind of capabilities and, and and so on so everybody needs to kind of do their part and and, and at the moment of course the situation is a bit asymmetric that uh, some stakeholders of course have a bit more information of this than than some of the others and it will it will take time uh, and we need to 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 move step by step uh, to really get there now louis er, earlier in our conversation you mentioned the the first draft of the of the mass code uh, uh, and was being uh, reviewed at, at IMO. Where are we now in the, in that process? So uh, IMO has uh, set a quite an ambitious uh, target. They aim to have the uh, mass code enter into force by the 1st of January 2028. So uh, they are still in the drafting process. In fact, uh, currently it's a uh, the, the second draft is already out. So IMO has come out with a, a framework which details uh, the uh, the foundational issues that they will need to look into for the implementation of autonomous remote control functions. In addition to that, they've also uh, included two major chapters for the functions. One is the autonomous functions, and second is remote operations. So. The draft is out, the industry is pouring over it, trying to uh, give their advice, trying to influence how the final code will come out. So uh, it's a kind of a race against time because we really need to get uh, the code out by 2025 in order for it to enter in force by 2028. Uh, and as like any endeavor where there's multiple parties, it, it will not be a walk in the park. Uh, but what we see is that there's really a lot of strong will from the industry, from the various stakeholders, from the flag states, port state, and so on industry, to be able to come up with a goal-based framework which is practical and yet flexible enough, uh, which will not hinder the development of new technologies. Now, do you, do you see any uh, particular, you know, topics or concerns uh, that you think that the code should address maybe, maybe if you could take that one first, Louis, and then uh, Kalevi uh, comment afterwards. Yes. So uh, traditionally, uh, the maritime industry uh, looks at safety from four factors or four fields. Firstly, you have uh, hull and structures. Secondly, you have machinery. Third, piping, and fourth, electrical and automation. Now, as we we move forward, uh, what we see is that. Uh, artificial intelligence algorithms uh, are increasingly increasingly being used uh, in the design of the vessel design of systems and also in the operations. So what uh, 
we also feel that uh, the code should be addressed uh, is how are we to, to in a sense, uh, check and how do we verify uh, AI technologies being put uh, on board vessels as we go forward? Yes, certainly. And I, I think also, also uh, you know, it, when it comes to AI technologies, uh, it's not only, you know, in, in, in verifying uh, those when delivered, but also kind of uh, how do we maintain it? Because, uh, you know, data-driven modeling, uh, you know, is something that you have to maintain, uh, maintain on a continuous basis. How do we maintain and how do we verify the integrity of those, of those updates and all that? That's one thing. And maybe the other thing, uh, which uh, I think should be also emphasized in in the in the mass code is is uh, kind of considering a ship as a system because now at at the moment uh, different kind of subsystems uh, on board vessels are on purpose uh, let's say designed to be isolated so that you have have like a, you know fault fault tolerance uh, from, from that perspective but the challenge there is that uh, now they have also been kind of driven to a state that uh, you know they need to be operated so that the uh, human crew manages the interfaces and interplay between different uh, subsystems and and when you go to more higher level of automation that is no longer an option you you need to uh, consider how the ship behaves as a system how each and every subsystem should play together so that from a uh, you know you know top level uh, the operations is safe and in, in, the, the integrity is guaranteed. And this is maybe something that uh, that uh, I think there should be more focus and more more discussion on 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 this one as well. Louis, do you do you have anything to to add to that? Yes. Uh, so in a sense, uh, I agree with uh, LV. So the ship system, ship has traditionally has uh, the systems operating in a sense in its silo. The ship's uh, systems typically are also uh, provided by different vendors uh, in the supply chain. But as we go forward, looking at the overall uh, aim of the industry, which is to deca decarbonize and uh, get to a net zero future, uh, that is no longer an option. In all, we need to optimize the performance of the vessel. And one way to optimize the performance of the vessel is to ensure that the various systems work within the optimum range of each other. So the only way to to go forward to that is to look at uh, take a take a system of systems view of the vessel, where you're not looking at the various systems individually, but it all has to work holistically together, uh, as like what the term Calvi mentioned, uh, the whole ship as a system. And speaking of systems, of course. Uh... Uh, probably one of the ship's most important safety sy systems is is the crew. You know, what what kind of buy-in do you have to have uh, from the crew for uh, autonomous or, or remote control uh, functions to to be successful? Maybe Kalevi, if if you want to um, address that. Firstly, I, I think that it's quite important to 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 emphasize that uh, that uh, that the technologies are supposed to make people's life, lives uh, easier you know if we end up in a situation that we have uh, we have let's say everything else that you have now on board and then on, on top of that uh, the autonomous things and 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 it would just bring more work for the crew that's a no go we can't you can't succeed with that and that will that will not succeed so of course we need to ensure that uh, that these technologies not only work as technologies, but so that they they help the lives, like like uh, improve the, the the work and 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 decrease the cognitive uh, workload of the of the crew, uh, so that the technologies will kind of support and and be more let's say responsible of those parts of the operations where they are designed to be responsible of uh, when when. Uh, that's kind of in the comfort zone of the of the of the technology, so to speak, and and then ensuring that uh, that that works smoothly, uh, so that uh, we can the crew can use their strength when needed, uh, and and have more let's say meaningful uh, time in 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 the meantime when they are not necessarily needed that much. And and Louis, did did you have anything to add to that? A second, by Colivier's mission, so. Uh, the best way to get the buy-in from the seafarers is, is if these technologies that we are making them use and that we're putting on board make their lives easier. 
and also uh, you know in a sense create a more safer uh, working environment for them. So that would be once seafarers are uh, you know once they have tasted the the easier life or easier working condition brought by such technologies, uh, I believe they will hop on board the train and upgrade themselves, upskill themselves, and use such technologies to their benefits. And do you see, uh, you know, certainly we're, we've just come out of, of the pandemic. Uh, do, do you see that has created more of a receptive atmosphere for using, you know, autonomous and, and remote control applications? Do you, do you see the, the industry more ready to, to take up the technology? Yes, John, definitely. So uh, the COVID pandemic, you know, has taught the whole world. And of course, in the context of a corporation from top management down to their middle managers, down to the the, the engineer and work, working level, that you can actually carry out work uh, remotely. And this work is still efficient and still effective. And in addition to uh, bringing about uh, and kind of uh, educating the whole of the workforce how to carry out work remotely, uh, with the pandemic, uh, with post- it also has impacted the risk assessment that each, com- uh, that each company, each organization is carrying out to enable their operations to go along unhindered. So uh, on board of vessels, if for we have to take into account that in the future, uh, somebody on board a vessel may get COVID or a certain other type of uh, 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 infectious diseases. So uh, in a risk assessment type, we have to take into account that in case this happened, the entire vessel will, in a sense, be considered uh, down. So with remote operations, with autonomous operations, we still can allow operations to carry on with control or supervision uh, from a remote station or an onshore station. So yes, uh, the pandemic has really uh, kind of a given a speed boost to uh, to the development of autonomous and remote control technologies. Do you uh, agree with that, uh, Kalevi? Certainly. I, I think, uh, it, you know, during the pa- pandemic, uh, everybody had to find new ways to, 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 to do uh, and, and to, to kind of uh, maintain, the, maintain the business and, 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 and deliver the projects, especially in this uh, maritime industry. I'm more in the, in the global industry and, and, and from ABB's perspective, for example, uh, you, know, we've been, you know, we've delivered uh, ships, uh, you know, all, all around the world. So during pandemic, of course, when, when you can travel, you have to find uh, new ways to, to do, uh, you know, commissioning uh, more, more remotely, to, to do uh, more maintenance uh, m- more remotely, and and also now uh, classification societies such as ABS are are also uh, enabling uh, doing a remote survey uh, for 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 the system, so that you know crew doesn't and people uh, don't have to travel uh, for for example uh, factory acceptance tests uh, for 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 the, for the systems. It's quite quite. Uh, Quite a lot of benefits, uh, you know, for the whole whole industry to, you know, you know, to re- reduce traveling and 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 then maintain the operations. Uh, and maybe the other other thing also that uh, even if we are not necessarily seeing uh, in a in a near future like ocean going remote control vessels, but what we are seeing already today is that more and more work. And tasks are done in collaboration with the onshore crew and and the onboard crew, such as uh, you know planning and managing the voyage, certain risk assessment, uh, you know different kind of uh, operations that uh, can be more efficient uh, to be done from onshore. And this is of course uh, what, what we're seeing uh, happening uh, more, more and more uh, in, in in the industry. Now we're we're just about out of time for the podcast, but uh, I thought if there was anything uh, you wanted to uh, leave as far as final thoughts for our listeners, uh, maybe Louis, if you had any uh, final uh, key takeaways for for the listeners in regarding uh, autonomous uh, technology. Yeah, looking at autonomous technology, uh, the key takeaway it's uh, it is not technology for technology's sake. There are there are real drivers. Uh, that kind of a uh, demand such the technology or there are real drivers that uh, require optimum use of such technology, which is to improve safety. So uh, going forward, what we'll see is that the uh, 
uh, industry is currently in the midst of great transformation. Uh, like Galavi has alluded to, uh, we are moving with the new technologies coming up, the new requirement to increase safety. We are saying that we are there's a need for a mindset change to be able to adopt and implement such technologies efficiently to the benefit of the industry and the benefit of all. Yes, to 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 add on 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 that, uh, of course, I agree uh, with what what Louis said. Uh, I think uh, we're already seeing today that uh, those, let's say, first movers who invest uh, in 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 these autonomous technologies today, uh, when it comes to situational, when it when it comes to more advanced control, uh, collision detection and collision avoidance, even to some extent, uh, maybe in short distance remote control, uh, they are gaining. Uh, competitive advantage and, and 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 improving their their let's say business uh, by means of these technologies and and we will see this uh, more and more in, in in the future especially when the when the regulatory uh, picks up and the whole industry takes the next next steps so uh, i think we're we're just in the beginning uh, but uh, but already at speed i would say well it- Safety and competitive advantages. Uh, I think uh, you've, you've hit key issues, certainly for for vessel owners. Gentlemen, uh, thank you both for joining me today on uh, Setting Course and ABS podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today on Setting Course and ABS podcast. If you're interested in learning more about today's topic or listening to more episodes, visit www.eagle.org. 